Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, my dear brothers and sisters in the Quran, Yuridu Allahu bikumul yusra wa la yuridu bikumul usra. Allah intends for you ease and he does not intend for you hardship. He intends for you ease, he does not intend for you hardship. Again, Allah says he imposes no difficulties on you in religion the way of your father, Ibrahim. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, make things easy and do not make things difficult. Make things easy and do not make things difficult. And cheer people up with good news and do not repulse them. Don't push them away aggressively and in a way that just repulses them. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, these references that I shared with you, I shared a couple of weeks ago when we began this conversation on what we hope to be a continuing discourse on place, time, and circumstances place, time, and circumstance. These references, my dear brothers and sisters, gives us a sense of the flexibility and the adaptability of our religion of Islam and how we understand its rules and its applications and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to facilitate a life for us that is easy for us, a life of us of ease, not that we are in perpetual struggle, perpetual hardship, in a perpet and just a bad space all the time. That is not Islam. Islam should bring joy to our lives. Islam should be relieving burdens. Islam should be facilitating paths where before you didn't have a path, now you have a path. Islam should be that which is be liberating, lifting things off of us that are weighing us, that are weighing us. My dear brothers and sisters, as we understand our religion more holistically, but also with a reference to history, providing historical context, inshallah, I believe that we can glean gems from what has already happened, if we look at them through the, the proper lens, with the right intentions, and with the right attention to detail, inshallah. As we are looking to establish and build upon community life, which is the aim, that is the aim in Islam. If you study the, the, the context of Islam, yes, it addresses the individual person, it absolutely does. But it also, and probably more readily, it speaks of us in the context of community. That each of us are connected to each other. The Prophet wasallam said, is that the Muslim is a mirror to his brother, a sister. Where mirror suggests I'm in proximity to you. Mirror suggests that we're reflecting things back to each other. If I'm isolated and I'm alone, then how can I be a mirror to my brother or my sister? How can I do that? It does not make logical sense. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that, that, that we are to, he said, well, you never will you have, uh, 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 never will you enter, uh, enter paradise. Like you can't even get in until you have faith. And never will you have faith until you love 
for your brother or your sister what you love for yourself. So it is an expansion of the individual self to the collective self. It's an expansion. It, this is the way. Even our salat, even the salat, you know this as well as I do or better, that the greater blessing is in when we pray in the group versus praying alone. So all of the, all the roads lead to community. All the roads lead to togetherness. But when we come together, in order for us not to have chaos, when we come together, we have to have a system. We have to have order. We have to understand uh, the prerequisites that need to happen. We have to study history to see how did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam apply our religion in such a beautiful and merciful way that he built community. And he, and he instilled in people who were, were steeped into darkness, steeped into backwards behavior, steeped into superstition, steeped into, into oppressing one another. He instilled into them a spirit of liberation and liberal education that they became the leaders of the world. But I, I, I say this to you in all seriousness, those individuals that we, that we think about, that we love, they, they were no different than you and I. They were common people with human conditions that had to be reconciled with Islam. I say that to say that the same is possible for us. When we study Islam, we study this idea of place, time, and circumstance. And these are essential to understand how things are to be applied, how we are to measure things. Sometimes we think that Islam just came down in a vacuum, boom, and it was there and everything was operational. It was not that way. It was not that way. When we're lazy in our research or lazy in our presentation, we go from zero to 60. We leave out all the nuance. We leave out all the layers. And I say to you that we can't build without layers. You, you can't build without the layers. Our leader, our late leader and teacher, Imam Warafdi Muhammad, may Allah have mercy upon him. I mean, he, he said that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said he needed a situation in which he was accountable to no one except Allah. And he was referencing he was referencing his conditions in Mecca when the Muslims were just a small group. Just, it was early. And his transition to Medina. See, sometimes we think about that as what happened. You know, these, it was a group. They had heard about Islam. They came to the Prophet وسلم, to learn from him. They asked questions about him and extended an invitation to him. And he, let, he accepted the invitation. And they went to Medina, alhamdulillah, right? A lot of other things in the story, but I'm giving you the, you know, the, the, the quick, the quick uh, history, right? What we, what we don't readily understand, what we don't readily pick up on is that this is what Islam needed to go to the next level. So it was brought about by a situation, brought about by a circumstance. Nothing happens by coincidence. In our religion, we don't, we don't think this way, like, oh, that was just a coincidence. No, 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 no. You don't fully understand the context. But nothing happens just by happenstance, by, by coincidence. No. It's what Islam needed for that time to grow to the next level, Islam needed a place and a space in which it could establish itself. So the opportunity was created by an invitation being extended to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Medina was necessary for Islam to grow. It wasn't just a circumstance. It wasn't just something that happened. It was necessary. And I would even go as far as to say it, it was facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Medina was facilitated by Allah. Yes. Medina, known as Medina al munawwara the city of enlightenment, is where Islam was codified and brought into the form like a complete system, a complete system. 
So the system, the laws were arranged, it was planned, and it was systematic in ways that allow people to live the best quality of life and also tapping into their potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put into each and every one of us. Do you know that each of you have been given potential by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That he's put a gift in each and every one of you that is unique to you? It is as unique as your fingerprints. No one has the same fingerprints. I want you just to hold that for a moment. No one has the same fingerprints. That's how they can distinguish who did something versus who didn't do something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each of us a uniqueness in us that the world needs, the community needs. But without the realization that many of us will die, we will, we will live, we will be born, live, die, but never understanding what our potential is. We ask Allah to protect us from that. Amen. But we also need circumstances that allow that potential to grow. And this is what Medina was and is for the Muslims. This is what it represents. The circumstance created by an invitation from the Ansars to live a life unencumbered, a life provide, that provided space, time, and circumstance for Islam to flourish. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is when things got real for us. There was a tradition from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, narration, and where there was, and this was in Mecca, this when it was in, under heavy persecution. Under heavy persecution. And there was a man who had, who had heard the message of Islam, he had accepted Islam, but, but those who he was, he was the property of, of another man, right? And, and when they found out about that, about this, they tortured him. They physically tortured him. It said that the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, he was moving by and he saw this. He could see it. He could see it. And the man was calling out. He was in agony. But they were in Mecca. They were being oppressed. They did not have a situation, the place, time, or circumstance. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, called out to him, to him. He said to him, and he, he, he said all that he could say to him was, yeah, yeah, he said, be patient. Be patient. Now, everything that you know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything that you know or you think you know, about him. If he was in a position to do something about this man's suffering, wouldn't he have done it? Yes, he would have done it. But he wasn't. He wasn't. That's the reality. He wasn't. He did not have circumstance. No time or place. What am I saying? I'm saying that sometimes situations are not always ideal. Sometimes situations are outright oppressive, and sometimes we become subject to things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy and his wisdom facilitated Medina. And alhamdulillah. My dear brothers and sisters, I, I want to have us to look historically at some of these occurrences. And I want us to begin to measure, and I'm inviting you into a discourse now to, so that we can measure where are we in terms of place, time, circumstance. We're going to do a little compare and contrast, inshallah, about things that were possible in Medina that were not possible in Mecca. And all, but all the time, all the time, I want you to have your mind on where we are today. I want to have the what are what is our condition today? What is possible for us today? Make dua I ask Allah to help us understand our religion better, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. As I've said to you in previous, previously on this topic, that the place, place, the time, time, and the ظروف circumstance are critical to understanding the systems of Islam, Islamic jurisprudence, the Sharia, all these things that we, we, throw, we throw around a lot. But because Islamists was practicing different and different things in different times, different places, you have to understand the conditions that existed that accounted for the variance. Otherwise, it would all just have been the same. But it was not. History says it was not. The establishment of the Muslim state. In Mecca, it said the Prophet وسلم, he faced severe persecution from the Quraysh. The Muslims were the minority. And they had no political authority or power, making it really impossible for them to establish an Islamic state. That was the condition in Mecca. Medina. In Medina, the Prophet وسلم, was able to establish the Islamic state and a formal sense of government and structure, enforcing laws based on Islamic principles and led the community of believers. This included the creation of the Constitution of Medina, which we're going to get into these elements in a later, in a later conversation, inshallah. Very important, very, very important for us understanding how to codify life together in a pluralistic society. Very important for us to do. But it outlined the rights and responsibilities of all citizens, including the Muslims, the Jews, and other tribes. Because the Islamic State was established in Mecca, in Medina, probably not in Mecca. The public performance of Salah. The public performance of Salah, meaning how we're gathering right here. In Mecca, due to the persecution, if we were in Mecca in that time and we tried to gather like this, they would come in on us. They would disrupt us. Many of us would not leave out of here alive. Because it was, it was, it was shoot them on sight. Kill them on sight. It was a hostile environment. Hence, prayer, salat, in public, and, and the uniform like we have it, was not instituted in Mecca. It was instituted in Medina. So even your obligations in Islam, what you're obligated to do, is also conditional about the place, the time, and your circumstance. You know, the great figure, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu. You all know the stories about Umar and how Umar was, Umar was tough. He, he was, as they say, he was that guy. He was so much that way that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if, if Umar was walking down the street, and the shaitan was walking down the same side of the street. He said, shaitan would move over to the other side of the street. He wanted, no, he wanted nothing to do with Umar. That's how, that's how overbearing his presence was. I'm sharing this with you so you can understand what I'm about to tell you about Umar. Omar, once he, once he was convinced about Islam, even his story, how he came to Islam through his sister, it's another story, but, 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 but something you need to go. You need to go and revisit this, right? But once he had embraced Islam, and Islam was in his heart, right? And he knew about Salat. He knew about Salat. Omar went publicly to the Kaaba and prayed in front of everybody and dared them to do, come, do what you will. But everybody wasn't Umar. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu he said that this should not be. He didn't want to put the burden 
on the believers this way because they would be subject to be harmed. And when we're weighing certain things, the preservation of life is more important. It's more important. So though we have this figure and we love Omar, we love, love Omar, we love his fearlessness, we also understand the wisdom of Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu of having the proper place, the proper time, and the proper circumstance. Everything has its place. It's time and it's circumstance. The implement, implementation of the law. In Mecca, the Quraysh, they were the leaders. They had the authority. Islamic law could be implemented in that society. The Muslims in Mecca were subject to the laws and customs of the Quraysh with limited application of the Sharia, limited at best. In Medina, they was able to implement and enforce Islamic laws, including matters of criminal justice, family law, social justice, etc. It was governed by the laws of Islam and the Prophet وسلم, served as the final authority in legal matters. Place, time, circumstance. Military campaigns, military campaigns. In Mecca, the Muslims were largely defenseless and prohibited from fighting back against persecution. You know that this, in this time period, this is when the, this is when the, the boycott of the Muslims had took place. And uh, uh, the Rasul and his wife Khadija, radiallahu anha, she passed away during the midst of the boycott because they couldn't get her the medication. She, they couldn't get her what she needed. They had set up a situation to, they said, nobody, not only can you not talk to him, you cannot do business with him. His money is no good here. His money is no good here. And if anyone is caught doing transacting businesses, you're going to be subject to severe punishment. So hence the lines of resources dried up. And she was a casualty. Others were too, but she was a casualty at that time. They did not have place, time, and circumstance. But in Medina, they were able to organize and lead military campaigns to defend Islam at Badr al-Khud, the Battle of the Trench, and many others, to defend the Islamic community and to secure the state. The change in, pl the change in place and circumstance allowed the Muslims to defend themselves and their interests, and their interests. And last but not least, dear Muslims, the alliances of treaties. When we think about this, as I conclude, inshallah ta'ala, our mind readily goes to the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. You all, you all know this as well as I do or better. Of when they went to Mecca, when they went to Medina, and they had to negotiate with the Quraysh that didn't allow them to come to the house, didn't allow them to return. You know, they had very unfavorable circumstances. Very unfavorable circumstances. But again, thinking about the situation, the wisdom of Islam and the wisdom of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as, as the leader of that time. When they were negotiating, a couple of incidents happened, right? We remember they said when they, he wanted to, when they were gonna sign it, they would sign it, uh, Rasulullah, the message of God, seal it. He said, no, we don't accept you as that. We don't accept you as that. Ali described, he's described writing it down, and, and, and he was offended. He was offended by this, like, what do you mean? 
the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ali, remove it. Ali hesitated. He didn't want to, he refused to remove it. <coughs> the Messenger of Allah reached down and he rubbed it out himself. He rubbed it out himself. Some things, all things are not on the same level. And he knew that. And as they continue to negotiate, as they continue to negotiate uh, the, tri the Treaty of Hudaybia, the circumstances were unfavorable on paper for the Muslim. Until one time, until at some point, breaking point for Umar ibn Khattab. Yeah, Rasulullah said, aren't you the messenger of God? It's not Allah God. It's not the Quran, our book, are you not the messenger of God? He affirmed all of it. He said, well then, we, we can take care of this now. We don't, we're not negotiating from a person. We, 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 we can go, as they said, we can take this to the streets now. The messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, understanding the wisdom of place, time, service, said, no. What was part of the other, the piece of the story that's kind of in the hidden in the background, that Omar was the voice, but others felt the same. But they didn't know better than him. They didn't know better than, than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For them to do that, take that position, it would seem like it's a very courageous thing to do, but they would have suffered consequences. They would have suffered casualties unnecessarily. <laughs> 